So a couple years ago, I decided to paint my front door red. The white had gotten kind of smudged up and dingy. And also when we built the house a couple years ago, there was this gap that kind of formed. Um, just the house settled, so we got a little bit of a gap here. And we began to deal with a little bit of rust. We had these little pinpricks of rust at the bottom of our door. And so my thought was I would run to the hardware store, pick up some Rust-Oleum and just paint it this nice beautiful red. So I went to the hardware, I went up to get my paint mix and the guy there, now if you've ever been to the hardware store, you know that they will try their very best to make sure that you get what you need and not what you think you need. And bless his heart, he mixed up my Rust-Oleum for me, he helped me find the perfect color and he said, but make sure Jenny, make sure that you sand off all the rust before you paint over the door. And I said, okay, sure. And then I came home and guys, I was in a rush. I wanted that beautiful red paint on my door and it was rust -Oleo, So I thought surely that would cover over it and it would be fine. But guys, I should have listened to him because, okay, here we go. True confessions time. Don't tell the people at the Poplar Hardware. Look at this. I don't know if you can really see that in the video. This is crazy. I'm sorry, guys. Look at all that rust down there. Okay, now that you've been turned on your heads and stuff. It came through anyways. Now, for the most part, unless you like get down on your hands and knees like I just did, or you know, I do a video showing you that, you're not gonna see all the rust and corrosion down there. The door actually looks pretty good. The red covers it up pretty well. But the truth of the matter is there is still rust under that door. And the fact that I painted it red does hide the problem. It does make it look better, but the problem is still there. And the truth of the matter is that at whatever point I decide to actually go back and deal with that rust that's causing that problem, it's gonna be another layer or actually like two layers of paint for me to scrape off to deal with that corrosion. So I think that in a lot of ways, this is what our spiritual lives are like. We have this vision, kind of this, you know, red door idea or Pinterest idea of what it would look like to live a good Christian life, to live a God honoring life and holy life. So we, we go and we, we go to church and we get really active in our faith and we, we pray and we talk to God and we get, you know, we get this beautiful kind of red coat of paint over our lives. And that is wonderful. But the problem is sometimes Sometimes we let that distract us from the fact that there is still stuff under the surface of our lives that needs to be dealt with. Jesus washes away our sin, but he also wants us to invite him into our lives. He and the guys at the hardware store know what they are talking about. There is stuff that needs to be dealt with. And um, he's inviting us to something deeper than just a new coat of paint. Now, I have been reading the book, The Divine Conspiracy by Dallas Willard lately, and one of the things that he talks about in his section on the Sermon on the Mount, which is a great section, it's one of the things that everyone raves about about that book, there's so much good stuff in there. But, but he talks about the Sermon on the Mount and our tendency to view it as another list of really good rules that we need to follow in order to be a really good person. So it's kind of like this new law, like Jesus came and there was this old law, these old rules about what it meant to be a good person. And now Jesus is giving us this new, even more demanding set of laws that we have to follow to be an actually really good person. But Dallas Willard argues that this is actually the opposite of Jesus' intent. That instead of just wanting to give us a shiny new coat of red paint, Jesus wants to transform us into the sort of people who naturally follow God's laws, who naturally do God's will. Now, if it doesn't come naturally to us, it's not an excuse for not doing it. It's not, you know, just because you maybe feel like murdering someone doesn't mean that it's okay to go out and do that. Like, no don't do that. We've got to avoid things. But really the heart of what Jesus is trying to do is transform us to help us become those sort of kingdom minded people who do God's will because we're like Jesus, because we are becoming more and more 
like Jesus. So ex- you have heard it said, do not murder. But Jesus wants to turn us into the sort of people who wouldn't even utter wounding words. You have heard it said, don't commit adultery. But Jesus wants to turn us into the sort of people who would rather gouge our own eyes out than treat another human being like an object. And this transformation is possible because this carpenter king, this carpenter from Galilee, has come among us and he's offered to do his work in us as we surrender our lives to him. He, does, he doesn't want to just slap on a new coat of paint and give us a Pinterest-worthy moral facelift or anything. He wants to do the deep work of stripping back the layers that have been compromised in our lives by rot and corrosion. He wants to build up those places that have been worn down and weakened. He wants to restore us into the sort of people that he always meant us to be, the sort of people that he created us to be, those good God-honoring kingdom people who he created us to be, who live and breathe love and life, not law. So here are my questions for you as we consider this. When you think about living a God-honoring life, are you more worried about fitting into kind of the prevailing religious culture and doing things the way that people might make you look good? Are you worried about just having a pretty red door to show everybody? Or are you actually living a life that's guided by the love of God for you and for the people around you? Are there places in your life where you've just slapped up a quick coat of paint to cover the corrosion underneath? Boy, haven't we all done this at times. What do you think of that now? Why did you do that? And how do you think God views that? Let's say Jesus is standing at your door with his tool belt strapped on, ready to get to work. What part of your heart would you lead him to first? And what part of your heart do you think he would lead you to if you let him take the lead? Like, would you bring him to your kitchen, but maybe keep that one closet over there hidden? Um, Where do you think Jesus would want to get started if you left the decision up to him? And in either of those situations, whether you just lead him into this certain part of your life or you let him lead you into a certain part of your life, What do you think Jesus wants to do there? Are you willing to let him into either of those spaces and cooperate in that renovation that he wants to do in your heart?